Another example of kind of tying everything together with the left endpoint, right hand um, endpoints with Riemann sums. Um, this time we have a trigonometric function, cosine of x minus five pi eighths. Interval is gonna be from pi fourths to three pi fourths and four subdivisions. And we're doing the exact same thing as we did in the previous example, except usually working with trigonometry is a little bit tougher. All right, let's sketch the graph, all right? And I'm gonna use some technology this time. Um, I'm gonna use a program called Fooplot. So I'm just going to go to foodplot.com. And of course, you can use your graphing calculator. All right. Uh, remember, our function was the cosine of x minus 5 pi over 8. All right. So here's our function. And even better, if you might remember that the bounds for this were from pi fourths to 3 pi fourths. All right. So I'm just going to go down here. And I'm going to type in pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. And I, just hit, I just hit enter after that. And here's our graph. Okay, so it does like this thing where it's increasing, increasing, increasing. Like right about at 2, it starts slightly decreasing again. Okay, so if I'm graphing this um, as best as I can, all right, then this is what we're going to get. All right, so we have like this sort of curve that just starts coming down just a little bit. So this is like our pi fourths, and this is our three pi fourths. All right, um, and of course, graphing calculator will work just as well. All right, but um, if you want to use some other uh, different technology like food plot, then that's a way to do it. Okay, now we have to we taken care of a. We're going to do b delta x. Remember is b minus a over n. In this case, we have three pi fourths minus pi fourths divided by four. If we subtract the numerator, that's gonna be two pi fourths, or in other words, that's gonna be pi halves. So we wind up with pi halves over four, and then that just winds up being pi over eight. All right, so. Now it gets a little bit tougher because we have to add pi eighths each time. So I'm just gonna do this like a number line. Okay, so we know that x zero was pi fourths. And, and this is what we're doing is we're getting these grid markers, by the way, or the grid points, okay? So x one is going to be pi fourths plus pi eighths, all right? Or if you got a common denominator eight, 2 pi eighths plus pi eighths or 3 pi eighths, okay? So that makes it pretty easy if we get a common denominator, right? For the next grid point, we're gonna take that 3 pi eighths, we're gonna add another pi eighths, and that's either 4 pi eighths, which I'm gonna hold on to, okay? Or just pi halves. X3, we're going to take the four pi eights or the pi halves from before. I'm just going to call it four pi eights. It's really pi halves, but that way we already have our common denominator. So it's five pi eights. And then finally, our X4 should be three pi fourths. We have five pi eights plus another pi eight. That's six pi eights or three pi all right, so a little bit tougher than before, okay, because we're doing trigonometry, but no big deal, okay, still like pre-calculus stuff that we're doing, just adding fractions together. All right, so those are our grid points. Now we're going to go ahead, we're going to sketch the graph um, using left Riemann sum and determine if it's an underestimate or overestimate, all right, so we have kind of have like this structure going on with it, and we're going to have our grid points, okay, so remember we have pi fourths, three pi eights, all these, all right? So in our graph, maybe something just about like this, okay? So this is our three pi fourths. This is our pi fourths. And remember, we're using left end fourths, okay? So this is one of them, all right? And then here's another one. And then here's another of our rectangles. Right. 
and I know I didn't do these all that well, but that's our last one, okay? Now, notice that, again, there's some space in between here, okay? So there's like a hole here, a hole here, a hole here. Now, this one is almost like an overestimate, but collectively, they're going to be underestimates, okay? So um, this is going to be an underestimate, okay? And our four points that we have are pi fourths. Remember, we had three pi eighths. So we just go back up here, three pi eighths, pi halves, five pi eighths. So this is our three pi eighths, and then pi halves, and then five pi eighths. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use Excel to help us out. Because remember, we're taking the base times the height of each of these to be able to figure this out. Okay, so it's going to be um, our base. And remember, our delta x is the base, which is pi eights in this case. Okay, so each of the lengths of the bases of these rectangles is pi eights. So we're going to have pi eights times the function at pi fourths plus pi eights times the function at three pi eights plus pi eights times the function at pi halves. And then finally, plus pi eighths times the function at five pi eighths. All right, now we can factor out that pi eighths, just like we did before in the previous problem, except that would half. It's a lot nicer to look at. So this is going to be our pi eighths. And we're going to hold on to this because we can reuse all this information when we figure out the right hand endpoints or the right hand sum. This is our f at pi fourths, f at three pi eighths, f at pi halves, and then f at five pi eighths. All right, now we're going to use Excel to help us out, OK? Um, so in Excel, to get the first endpoint, which is pi hat, pi fourths, OK? So we're just typing in these various endpoints first. Then we'll multiply at the end by pi eights, OK? Um, and one thing you might also want to do is expand the number of decimal points. So I'm just going to highlight this area. I'm going to right click, bring up Format Cells, go to Number, and I'm going to make this into, let's just say, eight decimal places, OK? Um, contingent upon what your answer requires you to round it up to, OK? So this is going to be equal. PI, and then you're going to use open parenthesis and close parenthesis divided by four, right? So that's how you get pi out of uh, Excel. Then we're going to have three PI divided by eight. Okay. And again, we're just using these values right here. So pi fourths, three pi eights, pi halves, and five pi eights. Okay. So that's going to be equal to PI over two. And then finally, five times PI over eight. All right, so these are our values. Now remember our function all the way at the beginning was the cosine of x minus pi five pi eights, okay? So this is gonna be equal to the cosine of x, which in this case is a1. So it's just placing x with a1 minus five times pi divided by eight. Okay. And then we're just going to drag it. And these are the values that we get. We're going to sum this up. Okay. Now remember, this is not the area. Okay. This is just what's underneath, or I'm sorry, what's inside the parentheses. Okay. So this is going to wind up being pi eighths times 3.8. 0136675. Right. And then we can either use our graphing calculator or I'm just going to use Excel again. Okay. And I'm going to take equal pi eights and I'm going to multiply that by 3.0136675. And I get 1.18346, blah, 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 blah. This should be the area that's an underestimate. Okay, so that's going to be 
three, four. All right. Now we have to do the exact same thing, except we're going to use the right hand rule. All right. And we should get an overestimate this time. But um, remember before what we did was we basically just copied exactly what we had, but we just cut out this leftmost endpoint. So we got rid of this and we replaced it with the rightmost endpoint. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Okay. We're going to draw the, the construction first. But if, when we go to do the computations, then we're just going to replace pi fourths with three pi fourths. Okay. And that should give us our answer. All right. But the construction. Okay. So once again, we know at pi fourths, it's going up, 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 up. And then somewhere around two, it starts going down just a little bit. So this is our pi fourths. And this is our three pi fourths. And we're using right rectangles this time. So here's one of them. And then here's another one. Okay. And then here's another one. And then we get this guy right here that gives us a little bit of an underestimate for this right end, this end point right here. Okay. So um, remember we had three pi eights and then pi halves and five pi eights. Okay. So that's our diagram. Um, we get an overestimate, an overestimate, a little bit of an over, and then an under here. All right. But this underestimate shouldn't be enough to cancel out all the other overestimates. So this is going to be an overestimate. And then finally, we just go back up here. And we are going to replace pi fourths with three pi fourths. All right. So we're going to get rid of this left endpoint. And we're going to replace it with this rightmost endpoint. All right. So same exact thing except this is going to be three pi fourths. And then this is going to be three pi fourths. And then that's going to change our sum, obviously. All right, so that's going to change all of this. We'll get rid of that. And we're just going to cheat and we're going to use Excel again. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my Excel sheet, all right? And remember, this is going to be three pi fourths, so three times pi over four. And check this out; it does everything for us. Okay, so now this is going to be the cosine of three pi fourths minus five pi eighths. This is the sum, and I do have to replace this number. Okay, so that's going to be three point five pi four eight six five eight five. All right. And so this time, so this was 3.55, right? And then the approximation, and I'm just gonna make sure I did that correctly. So I got one point three, nine, five, nine, nine, two, five, five. All right. And if you remember, that's pretty close to what we had before. Okay. So um, remember before you had like 1.18. So the true area, the true area is going to lie somewhere between like that 1.18 and then the 1.39 that we just got right here. Okay, technically 1.40 for rounding it. So, so if we were to estimate the area, the true area, based on the left hand and right hand mid or the left hand and right hand rules for our Riemann sums, that's what we would end up with. All right, so a little bit tougher than the previous one. Okay, not really that tough, just a lot of computation going on. Um, now, in our last video, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of tie everything together. We're going to start being able to uh, evaluate um, integrals by using geometry to get exact values. And then we're going to take a look at one last problem where we use the left-hand rule, the right-hand rule, and geometry to be able to approximate or get the exact value of a definite integral.